Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see what are the different Spark operations. We are going to learn about transformations. We are going to learn about actions. We are also going to see what are the different kinds of transformations. We are going to see what are narrow transformations and what are wide transformations and why they are actually narrow and wide. So let's move ahead and see exactly about transformations and action. So remember that transformations are nothing but they are just instructions to Spark on how you would like to modify data frames or RDDs, right? So let's say you have an RDD 1, you have a data frame 1 and you want to modify it. So right now you have the records of a subject uh, is equals to maths, right? In that a particular RDD you have records of subjects equals to maths now you want to remove it so what you'll do you'll just apply filter operation right so that filter is nothing but it's a transformation that you would be applying on a data frame or on an RDD to change the underlining data right that is what your transformation is and it is exactly equal to your transformations in ETL right that is what exactly you're doing here now transformation uh, let's say you have any kind of business logic right so you want to uh, let's say group by a particular value right or you want to do a union or you want to do a join operation between the two tables or in this case it will be between the two data frame right so that is just a business logic that you are applying and and or this is the transformation that you are applying it is equivalent to the transformation so anything any operation in spark that will actually change your underlining rdd or a data frame that will transform it or that will change it is called a transformation and when you call an action right what exactly is an action so remember that spark is a lazy evaluation so when we say lazy evaluation so let's say you have two data frames you want to join it and then you want to display it now in that case you will write you will read the two data frames you will do the join but till this case right what you have done you have read then you have done the join operation which is nothing but the transformation till this point nothing is going to execute in spark now until you say spark that hey i want to see what is there in my final data frame right until you say to the spark yes i want to see what is exactly there in my final data frame spark is not going to execute your join so that is what is called your lazy evaluation and action is exactly what makes spark run your transformations so let's say you want to see what you will say you will say display let's say you want to do a count count is an action you want to ask spark that hey in my final data frame how many records are present so in that case what spark will do spark will count and to do the count it has to execute your whole previous joins and everything right so action is something that actually helps you in running the transformation and showing you the final output right in this case the final output you can maybe let's say you have done the join between two data frame now you want to save it right you cannot save until your join has actually executed so your save actually becomes your action so same is save is your action right so this is what your transformation and action is in spark so now i'll actually give you an overview on how does this happen so everything underlining in spark is an rdd so even if you write code in form of data frame it is nothing but it is an rdd right underlining this i have already explained in my previous videos now if you see you apply any filter group by unions right all these are the transformations now all these transformation you apply on rdds on the data frames and you create a new rdd right this is what is exactly it happens now uh, the moment you call an action right then all the set of rdds that you have created by doing joins by doing the filters will get executed and then you are going to get the results right so this is the whole picture of your transformation and action and how does it actually play within now these are the list of few transformations and actions right there are multiple actions and multiple transformations you when you actually learn you actually have to practice each and every transformation so that you understand what is exactly happening so any action like collect what will collect do collect will take the data from all the executor nodes and it will show it to you it will take the data from all executor nodes and it will bring that data to the driver node to show it to you that is a collect so even to take the data from all the executor node it has to execute right similarly take right it will take the first file let take will give you again sample rows then 
collect as map, min, max, mean, count, display, all of these are called your actions. Now similarly, transformation, so map, filter, right, flat map, group by, union, intersection, zip, these are nothing but these are your transformations in Spark. Now we will see what are the different types of transformation. Now transformation in itself can be a narrow or wide. So when I say narrow and wide, what does it mean? So when we say narrow transformation, remember that whenever now all your data goes to the executor for execution, right in Spark. Now let's say you want to apply filter operation, right? Now you have your machine A, machine B, which are, which are nothing but your executor nodes. Now if you want to apply any kind of this is just an example that I'm giving you if you want to apply any kind of filter right in this case let's say I have a data frame where I want to filter the records where subject ID is equal to 2 now in this case what will happen is to apply that filter one machine do not need to talk to the another machine one executor node do not want to take the data from the second executor right whatever data is present in the first executor itself can actually get filtered so there is no shuffling that is happening and at the same time if the data is there in 10 partitions right there is no uh, transfer of the data between the partition so each partition can apply its own filter where subject equal to 2 right it doesn't need to take the data from different partitions to apply that filter so that is why it is called as a narrow transformation because it is one to one mapping so whatever data is there in my partition just take that data and do the filter and give me the next transformation uh, next partition right so this is one to one transformation is called a narrow transformation but now with let's say you want to do a join right now to do the join let's say the data is present in multiple partition which is mostly the case right it is very rare that for your join the data is present just in one partition it will be present in multiple partition now if it is present in multiple partition now to do the join you will actually need to read from both the partitions right now the moment you need to read from both the partition there's a shuffle happening right there's a shuffle happening there might be more number of partitions now that is called a wide transformation now in this case one uh, partition can lead to three different new partitions right one partition can lead to three different new partitions so this is what is called as your wide transformation now this is again one of the another diagrammatic representation of the narrow and the wide transformation so you can see map right map or filter you can actually apply it on the one partition itself right similarly union now union also what it will do it is not going to do any shuffling in between right so union will become a narrow transformation now when you talk about the wide transformation group by key right now you have to do a group by key now the data will be present let's say in the four partition now to do a group by key it has to read the data from the four partitions right and at the same time it at the same time there's a shuffle happening so that is why you have a white transformation over here now white transformation are complex transformation they take time to execute right so remember that part the narrow transformation since they are one-on-one -on -one, they are little on the easier side so now what I'll do is I'll just show you uh, you know the transformations that I've spoken about so let's say first let me talk about your uh, actions and transformations so now if you see over here right iris dot iris one sc dot text file i'm reading a text file over here i'm creating an rdd so the moment i create an rdd over here if i'm saying iris one dot take 10 what it will do it is going to give me the 10 uh, rows right it is going to give me the 10 rows from my iris rdd right so this is what this is an action now to give me this right to give me this to get me the first 10 rows or to give me the first 10 elements what exactly it is going to do it is going to read this file right text to file it is going to read this rdd it is going to do all the transformations which are at the top right so this is nothing but this is your action and similarly if you see iris one dot map now map is a transformation what this map will do it is taking a lambda function lambda is nothing but a one liner no neighbor function i have already made a video about lambda as well so in this it is going to take each and every element and it is going to split right so now what it, it is again doing it is again one on one mapping that it is trying to perform and then it is whatever the, the, the data is there in the output it is going to load it as a new rdd iris1 underscore split 
Now this part is a transformation part and the moment you again say dot take, right? Give me the first 10, right? Give me the first 10 rows. In that case, or the first 10 elements, in that case, again, what it is doing, it is actually making sure that this transformation is executed. So this is nothing but these are the transformation. Now there can be n number of transformations, okay? So this is not like, uh, you know, uh, there are just one or two transformations. So even if you see over here, right, I'm reading iris two files i'm reading two files of iris data set right now these are data frames i'm saying df1 dot union df2 now this union is nothing it is a transformation that is happening right the moment i say dot show now dot show is an action i'm asking it that okay you did the union but what is the output of the union now to give you the output of the union which is nothing but doing the, using the show command it has to run the union right this is a transformation and this becomes your action so like this there are multiple ways in which you can do it right now once you start actually doing hands-on it will become very easy for you to understand this as well now similarly uh, when you talk about the transformations part right um, and uh, you can actually see over here right I am using some import functions some imports I'm putting at the top now if you see I'm just doing if I want to do any kind of uh, you know aggregations right if i want to do uh, if i want to do any with column now when i say with column with column is used for multiple uh, things i have already made a video on this with column so this is my data frame right df delayed aggregate count it must be coming from somewhere at the top now this data frame i am saying dot with column add a new column to this particular data frame call it as a dense rank right call it as a dense rank and what is the actual transformation for this particular dense rank i am using the inbuilt function you already know dense rank in sql so do dense rank over over this window specification window specification is this now and then i'm doing a filter operation the where actually works like a filter only so where uh, the the function is uh, like a filter only right but the underlining execution is different so dot where column dense rank is less than or equal to 5 and then basically here if you see till here what i'm trying to do i'm trying to create a new column right i'm, ca I'm ca calling it as a dense rank and i'm applying a dense rank function after applying a dense rank function i am saying give me the data which has dense rank less than or equal to 5 right and from that select me these two values select select these two columns from that right till here everything is a transformation now whatever i've highlighted on the screen right here i'm just what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to say that okay do this do this do this i'm not saying show me this what show me what you have done now to do that i'm doing a display over here this becomes an action right now similarly uh, let me also show you a uh, few other things so let's say map right now i am again going to uh, show you a simple map operation now guys if you see over here right in this dot map what i'm trying to do i'm trying to take each and every variable uh, and then i'm trying to split it so this map operation is happening on each and every element now once it is happening on each and every element now if elements are present in different partitions also they don't need to read uh the data from a different partition right so whatever the data is present in my one partition that can be actually used to uh, do this map so that is why we say that this is one on one mapping it is one on one and that is why it is called as a narrow transformation that is why your map is nothing but it's a narrow transformation right now similarly let's say uh, let me check let me try to see if i have a filter also here now if you see this filter operation right now this is a data frame data frame dot filter and filter uh, these values right filter whatever uh, i'm saying that but wherever this column is present and it is equal to yes then in that case give me filter that now this filter is a transformation now again for this filter you don't need to read the data from multiple partitions if i have 10 rows in one partition 10 rows in another partition both the rows both the partition can actually do a filter on their own so that becomes and then this display becomes your action now similarly let me see if i have a join as well for you guys and let us see if we have join here now when i say join now if you see this is data frame one and data frame two now the moment i'm reading the uh, you know data from these two files and i'm see i'm putting it in form of data frames i'm saying data frame one dot join data frame two 
on id and do a inner join and then select these columns and just show me now here if you see basically what exactly is happening i am doing a join now to do the join on a particular id i have to read the data from multiple partitions right and that is when this join actually becomes your wide transformation so i hope you liked it you understood all of these and this is just diagrammatic representation i would want you guys to go back and do each of these operations on your own and try to understand what each of the each of these do so for example group by right so group by now if you want to group by a particular key in that case what will happen again you need to read the data from multiple partitions and it becomes a wide transformation now collect collect is going to take all the items from your executor nodes and it is going to give it to the driver to display it to you so collect is nothing but it is an action so i hope you like this particular video do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts or how you are liking these videos because i am making the videos uh, even in hindi in case uh, you guys want to learn it in hindi i am also making the videos in hindi i have a separate playlist in hindi as well and as well as you know most of my channel is you know in english only so i hope you like this particular video and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for being till here